So that ends uh, problem number. Uh, that ends problem number one. Let's move to problem number two. Okay, in problem number two, the example that I want to give you is one of uh, universal generalization. We did universal instantiation on one, and number two, I want to solve uh, and show the validity of um, an argument in predicate logic uh, using universal generalization. So, this is universal generalization. Universal generalization, and it's abbreviated UG. And what are the what are we given? Okay, on line one, premise one, we're given for all x, if x is an A, then x is a B. That's line one. So for all x, if x is an A, then x is a B. Uh, number two. For all x, for all x, if x is a c, then x is a d. Okay. Uh, number three. I'm actually writing that a little small, but it's okay. Um, not b y or not d y. And the conclusion that I'm trying that I'm trying to achieve is for all x. If x is an A, then x is not C. Okay. Let me make sure I wrote that right. X is an A, BX. Uh, well, let's see. B Y or not B Y. X is an A and X is. Okay. All right. So this is our. These are our premises. All right. Now we can begin our 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 proof. All right. Um, we're trying to get the claim universal generalization. So let's see how this is implemented. We start with line four, and immediately you recognize that we're going to do um, an instantiation using y. Right? We're going to do an instantiation using y because we're given x. Right? So it will be um, a y. If y is an a, then y is a b, and that is justified by line one. We've used universal instantiation. Okay, uh, number five, we want to do a universal instantiation for this claim, right? So we have if, what do we see? Two, I'm sorry. We have if y is a c, then y is a d, right? And that is universal instantiation on two. So we've done universal instantiation on one, universal instantiation on two. Okay, number six. Um, this problem is a little bit, a little bit more tricky because it's you need um, you need um, a little bit more knowledge as to the the, um, the structure. And again, the the rules that I have, all the rules I'll put um, I'll put the rules up. Oops, for this, right? I'll put the rules up. If, in case you're getting lost, and I, I hope you're not, but all the rules will be up. So just just print off the rules. The rules will come out of the back of this book, and you can see how I'm using the rules in order to sort of navigate the argument. All right. Um, now what we want to do is remember our goal is to get to if x is an a, then um, x is not a c, right? So we have a and c here, right? But I've also given this claim. Now, the more you do um, symbolizations and proofs for validity in, in, in um, either symbol well, symbolic logic proper or predicate logic, 
you'll start to understand how to how how to construct these sentences uh, or these uh, these statements. But what we can do is do uh, a combination, right, a conjunction on both of these lines, right. So I can have um, the following claim: a y uh, b y, right. If y is an a, then y is a b, line one, and this claim. If y is a c, then uh, y is a d. And what I've done is I've conjoined. I've, I've taken this line, this line, and I've added them together on one line. And the justification for that is on lines 4 and lines 5, right, 4 and 5, I've used conjunction, right? And basically all conjunction is going to say is if there is a on one line, and there's B on one line, then you can have uh, then you can have A and B, right? That's all that that's saying. I have basically A on one line, B on one line, so I can have A and B on another line. That's that's basically all that's saying. So I recognize then that I have this form on on a line. Okay. Well, um, this might be a little bit more advanced, but you can see that we're getting closer. You, it might not be apparent, but we are getting closer to this structure. And the question is, well, how do I go about getting this structure? On line 7, what we can recognize is that we can get this isolated, the uh, y is an a, and we can get y is a c isolated. And the way that we get it isolated on line 7 is by using what's known as a uh, destructive dilemma. Right? It's a, a, a rule called destructive dilemma dd, and you know that because we have the negation on this, right? We have not by, which is going to be here, not dy, which is going to be here, right? And then we're able to get the following, right? A, uh, not ay, or not cy, right? We're able to get not ay, not this, or not this, because we've been given this claim, right? Not by, or not, uh, not dy. So we're able to get not ay or not cy, which is very close to what we need, right? So we're able to get this by a combination of line three, well, line six and line three. Um, so we have line six and line three using destructive dilemma. All right. All right I'll go through that again. Uh, what we were, what we're given, is the universal instantiation. Right? We instantiated both claims um, using y. Then what we did is we did a combination of um, premise four and premise five using conjunction. Then what we were able to do is we see that the combination of this conditional and this conditional, um, also given this this disjunct, allows me to get this claim, right? Um, y is not an A or Y is not a C. The thing that we're trying to get to is basically X is, uh, if X is an A, then X is not a C. And the question is, how do we go about doing it on 8? Well, it should be apparent that on line 8, all we need to do, all we need to do at this point is material implication, right? All you, all you need to do is a material implication. Um, using material implication, I can change this disjunct into a conditional, right? So what I'm going to get is a y, if if y is an a, then y is not a c, right? If y is an a, then y is not a c, and we can see that's that's even closer. So what we were able to do is use implication on line seven. So we go to we write line seven, and we use. I always forget if it's i m p l. Yeah, it's i m p l. Implication, right? Um, we use implication on line seven. So now, hold on a second. Turn off my phone. Uh, mute, 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 mute. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. All right. So we're able to get uh, if y is an a, then y is not a c through um, implication on line seven. Now we're we're very close. Actually, I think this is the last step, uh, and it is the last step. Um, all I need to do now is to generalize this claim, 
right? This claim needs to be generalized. And we know that it's going to be valid because we've gone through step by step to get to this point. Uh, line number nine, all I need to do now is make the generaliz generalization. Remember, we have a generalized claim and we instantiate it. We go from the instantiation back to the generalized claim. So on line nine, we have for all x, right? Now we get rid of the y and we go back to the general claim, which is an x, right? If x is an a, right, I've generalized this, this instantiated claim. Here's the instantiated claim y. It's gone back to a generalized claim x. So for, for all x, if x is an a, then um, x is not a c, which is the conclusion. For all, for all x, if x is an a, then x is not a c, right? We were able to do that by using um, universal generalization, right? Universal generalization on line eight. So we go to line eight, comma, universal generalization, and we've demonstrated, we've proven the validity of the argument using uh, universal generalization. So what we've been able to do in, in problem number two is given the information that we, excuse me, Given the information that we had, the three premises, and then the conclusion, we were able to both use not only universal instantiation in the proof of this, the, the, the use of the formal proof of validity for this claim, but we were also able to use universal generalization. So we have universal instantiation in this uh, argument, or in this proof, and we have universal generalization. Um, it got a little tricky because we needed to see uh, and, and here's a here's a here's a just a quick aside. Here's in me constructing the problem. Um, I wanted to use uh, and give you an idea that when you get when you get, uh, for example, something like three, you should look into your rules of logic to see what has this type of format, what has this type of form, right? Because you're able to. This is a this is a hint into um, in this particular example the use of destructive dilemma, it could have been something else, right? So all of the, especially your premises, right, these are given to you as clues um, which, which should lead you to, you know, which particular rule you're going to use in order to arrive at a particular conclusion and, and so on and so on. Okay.